Hello, David. So this is the final table of a $10,000 buy-in online tournament, the Spring Championship of Online Poker. Here we have Talal, uh, rate a lot. We also have Noels, who is Sean Winter, who may or may not play the million dollar tournament. He's been playing a lot of the bigger stuff. He is uh, pretty much an absolute lunatic. We also have Gunning For You, who is Scott Seaver. We may encounter him. And then, um, who was the other one? Oh, Luckbox. Luckbox is John Dew John Jawanda. So you see we're playing 15,000 big blind, or 150,000 big blinds. So 20 big blinds deep for John Jawanda, 34 gunning for you. I'll try to use real names. It's hard for me. Um, 25 for Sean Winter, and then a lot for Talal. Talal ends up winning this. So we're just going to go through it and see what happens. I imagine here this player is going to shove all in. I would definitely shove all in. Oh, that's loud. Let's see. Let's turn that down. And easy fold for Talal. I have this sped up to go a little bit faster. Um, let's see if this queen jack offsuit opens. It probably shouldn't, just because there are too many people yet to act. I mean, I don't hate a raise, and I imagine Sean Winter will at least consider it because he's a bit of a lunatic. But from this earlier position, I think it's probably better to fold. This is a spot where if you look around, all these stacks are pretty great shove stacks, right? And whenever everyone yet to act has a pretty good shove stack, I think you probably want to be somewhat snug because you're going to get shoved on a lot. If this H7 pseudo was a little bit shallower, I would like a shove, but he's a little bit too deep. And um, now this 8-4 pseudo should probably defend. I mean, if you know someone like Sean Winter is going to be opening quite wide, you need to be defending quite wide. On this board, though, pretty easy check fold. You have absolutely nothing going for you. Um, you could better check this queen jack. I would typically check because you're only really concerned about a king coming off and a king's not the end of the world. If you are going to bet, you want to bet small. And as you see there, he bet a third pot. So it's perfectly fine and acceptable. Ace 10 suited under the gun is a fine, you know, call it a bluff hand. You can raise it and then fold if you get jammed on. That's definitely what I would do. Notice the somewhat small sizings, which I think is fine. Once you start to get shallow, even if you do think everyone else plays great, um, I, I still think small sizings are going to be better than big sizings for the most part. And here, I guess it's going to get back to Saul and he's going to defend, but you don't really love defending here. And now clear check fold. This is another spot where the ace-10 suited doesn't really mind checking. If he bets and gets raised, it's really miserable. But if it goes check, check, there really aren't that many bad cards for you. I mean, yeah, nine or an eight's kind of bad and a queen or a jack are kind of bad, but everything else is pretty nice. Now you can just check, 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 and then you can call a river bet, right? So I think Luckbox, John Jawanda played this one great. Um, you maybe can value bet that river. You can go either way, really. It's probably fine just to check. Especially that, That's a situation where if you're playing against good players, you want to be more inclined to check because they're going to check shove all in sometimes, and that's a pretty bad spot for you. So in that scenario, I'm... I'm fine checking, but if you told me we were against someone who you think is never going to bluff you or rarely going to bluff you, then you can be way more inclined to uh, value bet. So here, this is one of these spots where I actually don't mind a fold. Um, going back to the idea of equity realization, remember how we talked about if there's a raise, call, call, you need to fold stuff like this? Um, against an under-the-gun raiser or early position raisers in general, you're going to find your equity realization goes down quite a bit. However, since we are against Sean Winter, who I know is a bit on the looser side, I would be more inclined to call there for one big blind more into a six big or into a five big blind pot, whatever it would be. So I, I think you probably need to defend that hand right there. All right, pocket threes should likely fold, again, just due to being in early position. You're, you're going to find that fives, fours, threes, twos, especially with a medium stack, are quite prob problematic. Because um, if you raise and someone three bets, you just have to fold. And if you raise and someone calls, you're often going to end up with garbage. So I would probably have just folded this. From these first three spots, nine-handed, you really do need to be quite snug. Again, um, gunning for you is Scott Seaver, who is also a bit on the loose and splashy side in general. So I'm not surprised to see him raise this. Interesting that we have I Read Books, who I, I don't know who this is. He just elects to call. Um, I guess it's worth mentioning. I've not Googled these players. I probably should have Googled them, but um, I just knew those four off the top of my head. Um, I'm a little bit surprised we didn't see an all-in. I probably would have just shoved this, and I would be shoving here whatever GTO 
optimal a gto is and it's probably going to be just mostly like good hands maybe something like eights are better and then maybe ace jack suited better ace queen and better maybe ace jack offsuit ace 10 suited something like that stuff to go too wrong doing that but he decides to call in slow play now uh talal on the button likes to call which i think is fine pretty rough spot for the queens notice if he just jams pre-flop he just wins the pot and instead he's going to get in this spot where he should probably check fold it's highly likely someone has an ace um, i like the threes give up i do think this uh ace track should bet this is a spot though where i think he needs to either bet smaller or bigger notice the stacks he's dealing with here right if he bets the flop and someone calls pots can go up to three million so basically everyone's gonna have a pot size bet left i would have much preferred instead either him betting very small because notice he's not really worried about getting to getting outdrawn here like 380k and then bet something like a million on the turn then jam the river or bet slightly bigger on the flop and i think i would prefer slightly bigger on the flop although i don't mind the small bet size either i think as you are shallower you probably want to be more inclined to use a small bet on the flop i'm sorry if you're shallower you want to use a big bet on the flop because you don't mind protecting equity you really just don't want to get outdrawn whereas when you're a big stack you don't really mind if you lose a three million lose three million chips to someone because it's not the end of the world for you so i think as a big stack you want to be betting small with a wide range of hands like gut shots and stuff like that and your nuts and then as a shallow stack you want to be betting bigger for the most part and then checking a few more of the gut shot type hands that's, I think, what you need to do. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this medium-sized bet. Like, notice right here, if you bet three hundred, or if you bet something like 450k, maybe he gets called by the queens. Whereas now, when he bets 750, the queen should probably just fold. So that's the spot where he should either bet bigger to try to extract maximum value from an ace and just get it in, or he should bet smaller to try to get called by stuff that's drawing very, very thin. Uh, six is the same story under the gun. I would, I would have just folded this. Sevens, yikes! What a crappy spot for sevens. Um, remember I said I, I probably should have something like eights earlier whenever um, I think it was gunning for you, Ray, so I don't know if this is an all-in. Calling's pretty rough, too. So I, I don't. I actually don't mind this fold, mainly because under the gun should be quite strong. It just so turns out he has one of the worst hands in his range that you are beating. So I don't really mind that fold, and I don't think you need to shove there. If you shove there against any reasonable under-the-gun range, you're going to be losing money, so I'm, I'm fine with that. All right, um, raid a lot's probably going to raise the 10-8 suited. When you're the big stack, you should be raising a lot in these spots because it's really detrimental for any of these players to go broke. So seeing this fold here is actually quite telling. It lets us know that maybe he's not raising quite so wide into obvious shove stacks, which means that you should not be jamming over Talal quite as wide when he's raising into obvious shove stacks. 6-4 uh, offsuit, you can either limp or fold or raise. You can really do whatever you want. With this stack, I'd probably just fold and... Yvonne does fold. So now, Raid a lot's probably going to raise, and I imagine Luckbox is just going to shove. I would be all in here with the King Queen. Wow, A6 offsuit under the gun opens. That is way too wide. Let's talk about this briefly. So, this may look absurd, but with these medium stacks, if you don't think the big stack's going to mess around with you too much, you can open with some hands because it does look very, very strong. So, if it looks very strong, what do you want to do? Well, you want to block their shoving range, right? I mean, notice here we have one, two, three, four, five reasonable shoving ranges, maybe four reasonable shoving ranges if you're not counting Pablo. So given that is the case, you want to raise with ace X as a blocker. So the question is how wide do you want to go? Like you probably don't even need to be raising ace 10 offsuit under the gun. So, I mean, maybe ace 10 is a reasonable hand to add to your range or ace nine or maybe ace eight. I don't think you need to go to ace six, but you know, we see it happening. So now, um, Raid a lot of likes to call. I think this is fine. You may also want to three bet this as a bluff. Notice Luckbox now just folds, which, I mean, I get it. That I think this is probably a little bit tight. I would not mind the jam all in. It, it would be, like, I don't think you're winning a ton of money by jamming King Queen suited here, but if we think Raid a lot splashing around with suited connected type stuff, like King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, Jack 10 suited, etc. And we think under the gun's opening reasonable or maybe wider is probably fine. If we think under the gun is tight, which I'm very shocked this A6 offsuit raised, 
I don't hate the fold so much. Notice he's not calling though, because when you're calling, you're putting in 10% of your stack just hoping to get there. And when you get there, there's no guarantee you're going to get paid off. So I I get why I folded. I think I would have just found the all-in, though, because king-queen suit is really, really, really good. Jack-7 suit is going to call, obviously. And now I think this uh, Marco should just check fold. This is a spot where Ray Delosh have a lot of big, connected, suited cards. And gunning for you in the big blind should at least have something, right? Um, and sure enough, notice here, like, I don't mind this Jack-7 suited defend multi-way because it's suited and it's, you know, it's reasonable. So if Marco is going to bet, he wants to bet small because the king's never folding. So he wants to bet a small amount to lose less whenever he happens to be beat. Now he's just giving up. Um, I think Ray lot should bet very large here. Um, maybe 1.7 million. This is a situation where if you have a gut shot, you really want to maximize fold equity. And if you get check jammed on, it's not the end of the world because gut shots aren't coming in that often anyway. Um, so I, I like a big bet here with everything in your range. I do think he needs to float with all of his flush draws and stuff like that. If he bets a flush draw big and gets jammed, he just has to call it off. Um, the alternative line is to bet small, like 600K and then jam the river a lot. You know, this pot will go to 3.3 million. Opponent will have 4 million. You can then make a little bit of an overbet on the river and that's a pretty strong line to try to get this player off everything worse than a king. And when he checks this turn, he probably doesn't have a king, right? So now he just has a lot of aces, queens, which you block, jacks, tens, etc. And that's fine. I mean, like, th those are the hero call hands. Is this guy really hero calling it off with jacks here? Probably not, right? So he does go 800, which I think is fine. Whenever your opponent bets the flop small and then checks, the opponent usually just doesn't have a whole lot, right? When they don't have a whole lot, usually the small bet is ideal. But there is always this ICM pressure in mind that the big stack can apply a lot of aggression on the medium stacks. And when that's the case, you should be making that play with your best hands too, so you're at least somewhat balanced. So raise from Queen Jack, I would definitely call the 9-8. Uh, I guess this is a spot where you should just fold the 9-8. It's pretty brutal when you check and the opponent bets like 250k and you have to fold because you do have two overcards and that has a lot of equity. Notice that Pablo does go a little bit bigger, I guess, to try to make more hands like this fold, which I think is reasonable. And especially as your opponent does go bigger, you should be folding the 9-8. As your opponent goes smaller, you need to be more inclined to call with just overcards. Certainly you're not thrilled to call the overcards by any means. So ace nine suited opens, which is fine. And I imagine this, this is a spot where the seven six can call if it feels inclined. I mean, there's a chance Pablo three bets, but I think it'd be pretty ridiculous. I think you probably should defend the seven six, but again, going back to that equity realization chart, you're gonna find that the low connected hands like seven six and five four, they don't really flop much equity very often. And with hands like that, you need to be somewhat inclined to just check fold. So here, this is a spot where this medium stack can open kind of wide. If you take a look at the stacks yet to act, this is, again, this is the final table. If you take a look at the stacks yet to act, none of these players really want to bust before Ivam, Ivamiya. <laughs> so for that reason, that lets whoever the biggest stack remaining of the players in the hand which is Pablo, unless this player opens slightly wider than normal. So I don't, I'm not going to say he should open, but it's at least a consideration because of the stack sizes. 10-7 suited is not great. If it's 10-8 suited or 10-9 suited, I think you probably just need to raise it. And now this ace-3, notice it's again the biggest stack of the remaining stacks, definitely needs to open as well. And I think this ace-10 suited just needs to be all in. This is a spot where a button's opening quite wide, and ace-10 suited is great. And it does go all in, so perfectly fine and standard there. This hand... I don't really think the king three suited should open in this spot, given the big blind is the big stack, who should be playing way more hands than the other stacks. Um, nine five all suit should fold. I mean, really, this should just be a walk. 
Queen 10 offsuit is not a great hand either. Like I would have much preferred to raise a 10 7 suitor on the previous hand because you're not raising into the big stack. And um, King 10 suited. I mean, 10, 10, sorry, I say King 10. 10 7 suit is just a little bit better. Pocket 8 should definitely open though. So pretty easy open, I think, with this one. Um, sixes should probably call. I don't love it, but we're getting reasonable implied odds. 8-3 suited should probably still just fold. Even multi-way, even getting good odds, 8-3 suited is going to be dominated to death. Not necessarily dominated, but you're going to be against two big card hands. So you're really trying to make two pair better, and you're not really loving that, especially with this shallow stack. Um, it's okay now. Should the 8s bet? If it bets, it should bet small. As you see, it does bet small. 6s is, is in a pretty crappy spot, but should probably just fold, I think. It's somewhat likely that Raid a lot, Talal, should have a lot of ace 10s, ace 9s, ace 8s, etc. Like suited hands in his range. Ace 9 suited, ace 8 suited. Maybe ace jack off suit. And those are all hands that would definitely check call. They're just way many, way, way more better check calling hands. Like I'd much rather call a king queen in a spot than pocket 6s because king queen can at least improve to a reasonable holding. Whereas 6s can't really. Now on the river, do we bluff with 6s to try to get the opponent off of over pairs like 8s? or nines or tens. And I would say probably not. You have to think that Pablo would check back a lot of aces on the turn just to really make sure he doesn't get check shoved because getting check shoved here would be a bit of a disaster. So for that reason, I think you would just want to check with the sixes and hope to win, but you're not going to win very often here. You're going to be against a bad ace like ace X suited or a king a lot. And those hands just aren't going to fold to a river bluff. So it's going to go check check and that's going to be it probably. Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little. I hope you're enjoying this Thanksgiving Day Marathon. Let me take a second to tell you about one of the courses that I enjoyed making the most. That is a course where I prepared David Einhorn for the $1 million buy-in World Series of Poker one drop event. And the way we went about doing this was studying play from the players I thought he was likely to play against in the $1 million buy-in tournament. These players included Scott Seaver, Sean Winter, John Dewanda, Talal Chakursky, and some more top pros. And uh, fun enough, he actually got to play with some of these players in the Million Dollar Buy-In Tournament. And it went pretty well for him. He ended up taking, I think, sixth or seventh place. Um, so almost good run. But he, we were very happy with this play throughout the entire tournament. So that was excellent. If you are a Poker Coaching Premium member, you actually get access to this World Series of Poker one drop preparation course just included for being a member. Also, I have many other final table reviews, high stakes reviews, and one on one coaching sessions with my students there so that you can see how the best players in the world are getting prepared to play the biggest tournaments of their lives. And, um, you know, in addition to all that, we also have many, many courses to help you just learn to play fundamentally sound poker in whatever scenario that you are playing. So to get an extreme discount on Poker Coaching Premium or to pick up this one drop preparation session for only $15, can't be much cheaper than that, head over to pokercoaching.com slash Black Friday right now. Hope you continue enjoying this Thanksgiving Day Marathon. Hope you have some turkey. I think we're having salmon tonight. I should probably go find some turkey. Happy Thanksgiving.